everyone, it's Madison from PH Doodling. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. Now that we are halfway through the year, my journal is full, so it's time to switch over to a brand new journal. I decided to go with this blue notebook that has a cute little bee on the front of it. This journal is from Archer and Olive, and I absolutely love their notebooks. For my setup, I also decided to go with a matching color palette, so I picked some blues and teals that will be perfect for these setup pages. As I mentioned, this is a Archer and Olive notebook, and I love these notebooks because they are such high quality. This one has some gold on the edges, and then of course the signature Archer and Olive bookmark there as well. These notebooks are such high quality, I have started using them for the past year and a half now, and I couldn't recommend them more. The pages are so thick that nothing bleeds through, and it's just such high quality. I also really like how white the paper is, because it really makes my doodles stand out. If you're interested in making a purchase from their website, go down to my description and you'll see that there is a link there for Archer and Olive to give you 10% off your order. Alright, now I'm starting on my setup here, and the first thing you do when you get a new journal is of course put your name in the front cover. This is always a very intimidating process for me because you don't want to mess up, because it's the first thing that you will obviously see every time you open your notebook. So I sketched it out and went ahead for completing this page. As you can see, the theme that I decided to go with is kind of this abstract theme where I kind of drew a bunch of different shapes and then with my mild liners and then with my Pigma pen, I went ahead and kind of drew some doodle leaves across the top of that. This abstract theme has been done by several artists on Instagram and so I took some inspiration from them. I also had these two washi tapes in my collection that matched perfectly with my color palette that I had chosen, so I decided to add a few of them there as well. And that completes my name, and that was the most fun part of getting to start a new journal. Alright, now moving on to the actual setup. So the first page that I like to do when I start a new notebook is a brand new cover page. I know that we are already halfway through 2021, but I still decided to write the same sentiment, Hello 2021, just because why not, right? So you can see here I'm going ahead with my mild liners of the color palette that I chose for the month, and I'm just adding these abstract shapes um, and lines onto this page. So I did choose all mild liners for my color palette this month because I really liked the muted blues and teals together, and of course they also matched the notebook, which was a plus. You can see that I actually never outlined all these shapes with my black mild liner pen like I typically do with my doodles, and that really gives it a much softer look. Once I've added all the blocks of color on there, then I'm actually taking my fine liner pen and doodling some leaves over top of these blocks of colors. It kind of adds another dimension to the um, art overall and really adds a little bit of detail as well. I really, really like this look and it was also really quick and easy to do. So I highly recommend this as a theme if you are just wanting to get your setup over with um, or it can also be a really fun monthly theme as well. The last touch is I'm just go ahead, going ahead and lettering Hello 21 there on the front and then adding some white um, accents with my white gel pen and of course a few pieces of washi tape. And there you have my completed cover page. I couldn't be happier with how this turned out and I'm so glad that I have it at the front of my journal so I can look at it every time I open it. The next spread that I will be creating in this new journal is my future log. I use this as a space to write dates that are happening for the future months. So since we are going into July, I will only be making these spreads for the months July through December for the rest of 2021. And so what I'll do is with this page, I will be able to write dates in each of those months. And then once I actually do my monthly setup, I'll transfer these dates onto the monthly calendar. This is really helpful for people who are bullet journaling because we don't always have all of the months set up ahead of time. And so you need to have a space to put dates down so that you remember that you have these things to do. So I decided to just draw a few of my little abstract doodles up at the very top and then letter the months really quick there. And then I also added mini calendars underneath all of those months. I like having this as a reference for when I'm, again, setting up my monthly spreads. And also I like to highlight the date that I have an event and then I'll write that corresponding event down below in all of that empty space that I provided. So you can see I fast forward through, through that because it's so tedious to have to write all of those dates down, but I really love having them written down because it saves me time in advance. So I'm happy to do the work now to save myself some time in the future. So the finishing steps are just, again, adding a few of those little leaf doodles. Um, I saw people do a little bit more elaborate doodles, but I just did my simple leaf 
um, doodle because it was easy and also I always like how it looks. And finally I did decide to take my ruler and just draw a simple line between um, each of the months just so I have separation. I don't always draw lines like this but sometimes visually my mind needs it to be able to separate certain columns. So I just use my ruler with my Muji pen to add those lines in and then the spread is done. And so I was happy to only have to do six months because there are only six months left in the year. So this completes this spread and I did decide to outline the months and I liked how that looked a lot more. Helped them stood out just a teeny bit more. So now the next spreads that I will be creating is my 2022 dates and a space for my brain dump. So again, the perpetual problem being a bullet journal is that you don't have your planner completed, so it's nice to have a space to put dates that are far off in the future. So I decided to have a little space for 2022 dates because I'm not really anticipating that there are going to be that many, um, but if there's any notes that I need to write down, um, I can add them onto this space. So you can see I actually lightly erased over my doodles really quick. Um, before I actually started adding my color onto the top of it and I did this all throughout my setup And this is really helpful when you're using marker on top of pencil Sometimes if you color over top of your pencil, it can be hard to erase it completely And so if you actually go over your doodles Lightly with your eraser before you add the color it actually really helps you remove the pencil marks completely after you're completed And so I did do that for all of my spreads, uh, but I only left that in here once to show you how I did that so underneath um, so back to the what I'm actually doing here. Underneath the 2022 dates, I have a space for brain dump, and this is just a space where I can write notes um, of things that I need to reference or remember. I usually don't have very many, and so I just have a little space for that. And then I was so mad, I created this grid guide here on the right hand side, and my camera didn't capture the video. So I'm just going to describe to you how I set it up. First, I noted where the halfway space was vertically and horizontally. I then created sections where columns had a space in between and then a space not in between, showing for five, four, three, and two columns. So I find this is very helpful when setting up my spreads so that I don't have to count all the time. The next spread I'm going to be sharing with you is my Tombow swatch page. So if you have been following me on my channel, you know recently this past year, I um, complete, completed my entire Tombow collection and so I knew I needed to do a new swatch in my journal of my new collection and so I decided to do a two page spread so I could swatch every single marker. There are 108 and so I decided to do this column layout to make sure that I had enough space for all of the colors. You can see I lettered Tombow across the top there and I was very happy with how that turned out. I then went ahead and used my Muji pen to just write in all of the numbers um, for the markers. I used their swatch chart that they have on their website to help me um, create mine because they have all the numbers there in order, which was super helpful for this. So then you can see I went ahead and started swatching my colors, starting with the yellows and greens, and then I just continued this for the rest of the collection. Moving on to greens and blues, purples, pinks, reds and oranges yellows and blacks, and the grays. So this was very satisfying to complete and I use this all the time so I'm super excited to be able to reference that when doing my bullet journal setups. The other type of marker that I use frequently are my zebra mild liners and so I decided to do a swatch page for those as well. I do have the entire collection of these as well and so I was figured I would go ahead and swatch them. I do have other markers but the Tombow and the mild liners are really the main ones that I use in my spread setups. So I decided to only stick with those. I also in my previous spread setups have tried to fit all of my swatches on like one spread and that was just way too much to cram so I decided to break them up into their own little pages. So you can see here I decided to do this fun header and kind of create a border around these swatches for this page. I did decide to actually swatch them in the palettes that they came in and there are five which includes the fluorescent, the friendly, the cool, the warm, and the bright palette. As you can see here I have created a section for each of those and each of the palettes has five different colors. So see here I'm starting with the fluorescent palette and so I just quickly did a swatch of all of those colors. In addition I also went over with my Muji marker and wrote the name down just in case I ever need to reference it or let you guys know a color that I used. I like to just have that written down so I'm ready to go. Moving on now to the friendly palette. 
This is one of the newer ones that I've acquired and I really like the blues and the grays that are in this palette. I have to say the fluorescent palette is my least favorite. I think just because it really just reminds me of a highlighter and I like the other more um, neutral warm tones. The Cool palette is one of the first ones that I had and I have always loved using it. Um, the gray and the green are ones that I use very frequently in all of my spreads. I really like the mild liners. Um, I like having the highlighter portion so that I can make um, shading in my lines and things like that. Um, it's really easy using the highlighter. And then of course I love having the dual ended because it has twice as many functions. And then I need the bright palette which I love all of the colors in here. Um, the teal one I actually used in this setup uh, along with several others as well but they're always super fun to be able to use. So I hope you like how I did this palette. I thought it was kind of fun um, and a great way to be able to swatch them while still keeping them within their pre-decided pre palettes. I'm just adding a few little doodles around my header there and then this swatch page is complete. I really like creating these swatch pages because I do use them so frequently when doing my monthly setups. All right, let's go ahead and take a final flip through from this setup. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I had so much fun sharing it with you. I hope that my setup inspires you to do something creative in your bullet journal. If you liked this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe. Don't forget to check back at the beginning of the month when I will be posting my next monthly setup. If you like my content, be sure to check me out on Instagram at phdoodling21 where I post more content like this. Thank you so much for watching. Happy doodling!